वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय त्वम आत्म आत्मनात्मा अवेले अमोघाद्रक परा पुरुषम परमात्मा कलम अजम प्रजात्मा जगता शिवयाता Your goodness has perfect vision. You yourself can know the super soul, sorry, super soul personality of Godhead, because you are present as the plenary portion of the Lord. Although you are birthless, you have appeared on this earth for the well-being of all people. Please, therefore, describe the transcendental pastimes of the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, more vividly. Yeah, um, Hare Krishna, Mataji. If you can excuse me just for one minute, I'm just trying to look for Sanskrit. Actually, um, I mean, Sans. I can I can read in Sanskrit better. Is that okay? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. No problem. Bear with me. I'm so sorry. Um, लर्नेड सर्कल्स हैव पॉजिटिवली कंक्लूडेड that the infallible purpose of the advancement of knowledge namely austerities study of the vedas sacrifice chanting of hymns and charity culminates in the transcendental descriptions of the lord who is defined in choice poetry text 20 aham puratit bhave bhavam mune दास्यास्तु कस्याश्चन वेदवादिनाम निरूपितो बालक एव योगिनाम शुश्रूषणे प्रावृषि निर्विवक्षिताम ओ मुनि इन द लास्ट मिलेनियम आई वाज बोर्न एज द सन ऑफ अ सर्टेन मेड सर्वेंट एंगेज्ड इन द सर्विस ऑफ ब्राह्मणास हु वर फॉलोइंग द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ वेदांता when they were living together during the four months of the rainy season i was engaged in their personal service text 24 te maya maya peta akhil te maya peta akhil chapale vake dante krutak kridan ke pratinihi chakruhu krupam yatyapi tulya darshanah shushru shamarni munyo munyayol pavyapashini although they were impartial by nature those followers of tanta blessed me with their causeless mercy as far as i was concerned i was self controlled and had no attachment for sports even though i was a boy in addition i was not naughty and i did not speak more than required text 25 uchishtale pa uchishtale pa numodit dito dvijay he sas sakrut sma bhujve tadapast kil vishaha evam pravruttasya vishuddha chetasa tad dharma eva atmaruchihi prajayate once only by their permission i took the remnants of their food and by so doing all my sins were at once eradicated thus being engaged i became purified in heart and at that time the very nature of the transcendentalist became attractive to me text 26 tatran vaham krishna katha ha pragayata ashrunavam manoharha ताह श्रद्धया मे मेनुपतम विश्रु विश्रुण्वतः 
O Vyasadeva, in that association and by the mercy of those great Vedantists, I could hear them describe the attractive activities of Lord Krishna, and thus, listening attentively, my taste for hearing of the personality of Godhead increased at every step. Text 27. Tasmi stadalapta ruche mahamate riyash pravasya skalita mitmatir mama yaya hame tat sadas tat tat sad satvasa satvasa maya pashe mayi brahmani kalpitam pare. O great sage, as soon as I got a taste of the personality of Godhead, my attention to hear of the Lord was unflinching, and as my taste developed, I could realize that it was only in my ignorance that I had accepted gross and subtle coverings, for both the Lord and I are transcendental. Text 21. Thus, during two seasons, the rainy season and autumn, I had the opportunity to hear these great-souled sages constantly chant the unadulterated glories of the Lord Hari. As the flow of my devotional service began, the coverings of the mode of passion and ignorance vanished. Text 29. Tasevam menuratasya ashritasya hate shraddhanasya barasya dantasya nurcharasya cha I was very much attached to those stages. I was gentle in behavior, and all my sins were eradicated in their service. In my heart, I had strong faith in them. I had subjugated the senses, and I was strictly following them with body and mind. Text 30. Nyanam guyatamam yat yatat sakshat. Bhagavato Ditam Anvavochana Kamishantyaha Rupayadi Navatsalaha. As they were leaving, those Bhakti Vedantas, who are very kind to poor hearted souls, instructed me in that most confidential subject which is instructed by the personality of Godhead Himself. Text 31. By that confidential knowledge, I could understand clearly the influence of the energy of Lord Sri Krishna, the creator, maintainer, and annihilator of everything. By knowing that, one can return to him and personally meet him. Oh, Brahmana Vaisadeva, it is decided by the learned that the best remedial measure for removing all troubles and miseries is to dedicate one's activities to the service of the Supreme Lord. Godhead, Sri Krishna. O good soul, does not a thing applied therapeutically cure a disease 
which was caused by that very same thing? 634. Thus, when all a man's activities are dedicated to the service of the Lord, those very activities which caused his perpetual bondage become the destroyer of the tree of work. Text 35. Yadatra kriyate karma bhagavat paritoshanam jnanam yadatadadhinam hi bhakti yoga samanvitam. Whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of Lord Yoga or transcendental loving service to the Lord and what is called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor. Text 36. Kurvana Yatra Karamani Bhagavachi Shayaska Sakrut Gunanti Gunanamani Krishna Syadnusmaranti Cha. While performing duties according to the order of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one constantly remembers him, his names and his qualities. Text 37. Om Namo Bhagavate Tupyam Vasudhe Vayati Mahi Pratyum Pratyum Mya Nirudhaya Namaha Sangayacho. Let us all chant the glories of Vasudeva along with his plenary expansions, Pradyumna, Anirudha, and Sankarsana. Text 38. Iti murtya pridade no mantra murtim amurtikam yachate nepurusham sa samya samya darshanaha pun uman. Thus, he is the actual seer who worships, in the form of transcendental sound representation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, who has no material form. Text 39. Imam Swanigamam Brahman Vetya Mada Nushtitam Dan Me Nanam Meshwaryam Swaswit O Brahmana, thus by the Supreme Lord Krishna, I was endowed first with the transcendental knowledge of the Lord as inculcated in the confidential parts of the Vedas, then with the spiritual opulences, and then with his intimate loving service. Text 40. Tamapya da prashruta vishrutam vipoho samapyate yena vidam bubutsitam prakyahi dukher muhar muhar titatmam sanklesha nirvana mushanti nyanyatha. Please therefore describe your mighty Lord's activities which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the Vedas, for that will satisfy the hankerings of great learned men and at the same time mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, there is no other way to get out of such miseries. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank Hare you Krishna. so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, both of you. Very nicely recited. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Apologies for my uh, wrong pronunciation in the initially and throughout as well. Please forgive okay. me. No, no, that's okay, Sugada Mataji. Some of the Sanskrit words on this were really long and the verses are quite long. So you did very well, actually. Thank you so much. Um, okay, let me just share... If I can find it. OK. 
Okay, I think you can see the, yeah. So today, it's a long time for me. I'm coming after, I think, um, one and a half month, I think. So yeah, please forgive me. I'm sure I will be making many mistakes as usual. Please bear with me and tolerate me. Um, so we are reciting, today we are going to be discussing verse 34 from chapter 5, canto 1. But before we start, let's just say some prayers. Narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narottamam devim sarasvatim vyasam tato jayam udireth. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayan, unto Narnarayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. Srinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridayanta Stohiya Bradrani Vidunoti Shruhat Satam. Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul, in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Nasta praeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtaki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. I thought that we should recite all these verses before we start talking and discussing the Bhagavatam because they are very beautiful verses to actually learn and important to recite as well before we study the Bhagavatam. Okay. So, um, Canto 1, Chapter 5, Verse um, 34. So this is from the chapter where Narad Muni is instructing uh, about the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam to Srila Vyasadeva. So very important chapter. And this particular verse I thought is extremely important. I'm sure you will understand once we discuss this verse why it is so important to actually uh, pay attention to this uh, particular verse. Evam ninam kriya yoga sarve samrithi Ta evatma vinashaya kalpante kalpita pare. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Translation. Thus, when all a man's activities are dedicated to the service of the Lord, those very activities which caused his perpetual bondage become the destroyer of the tree of work. Um, does anybody wish to read the purport? We have two paragraphs, so maybe two devotees can read. Anybody would like to? Yes, Venkat Prabhu. Thank you. Yes, please read. Fruity work which has uh, perpetually engaged the living being is compared to the Banyan tree in the Bhagavad Gita. But it is certainly very deeply rooted. As long as the propensity for enjoying the fruit of work is there. One has to continue the transmigration of the soul from one body to one body or place to another according to one's nature of work. The propensity for enjoyment may be turned into the desire for serving the mission of the Lord. By doing so, one's activity is changed into karma yoga or the way by which one can attain spiritual perfection while engaging in the work for which he has a natural tendency. Here the work, art, sorry, here the word atma indicates the categories of all fruity work. The conclusion is that when the result of all fruity and other work is dotted with the service of the Lord, it will cease to generate further karma and will gradually develop into transcendental devotional service, which will not only cut off completely the root of the banyan tree, 
of work, but will also carry the performer to the lotus feet of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Venkat Prabhu. Can I read it to uh, Mataji, the next one? Yes, please. Hare Krishna. The summary is that one has to first, um, first of all, seek the association of pure devotees who not only are learned in the Vedanta, but are self-realized souls and unalloyed devotees of Lord Sri Krishna, the personality of God. In that association, the Neopati devotees must render loving service physically and mentally without reservation. This service attitude will induce the great souls to be more favorable in bestowing their mercy, which injects the Neopati with all the transcendental qualities of the pure devotees. Gradually, this is developed into a strong attachment to hearing transcendental pastimes of the Lord, which makes him able to catch up the constitutional position of the gross and subtle bodies and beyond them, the knowledge of pure soul and his eternal relation uh, relation with the supreme soul, the personality of Godhead. After the relation, after the relation is ascertained by establishment of the eternal relation, pure devotional service to the Lord beings gradually developing into of the personality of Godhead beyond the purview of impersonal Brahman and localized Paramatma. By such uh, Purushottama Yoga, as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, one is made perfect even during the present corporal, corporeal uh, existence, and one exhibits all the good qualities of the Lord to the highest percentage. Such is the development by association of pure devotees. Hare Krishna. Mute. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Mataji. Thank you very much. Before we continue, let me just let us just recite our prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Miritam Yena Tasmay Shri Guru Venamaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namostate, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari, Rishabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Banchakal Paturu Bescha, Kripa Sindhu Devacha, Patitanam Pavane Pyo, Vaishnave Pyo, Namo Namaha. Jai Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shudnyavadi Paschata Deshadarine Okay, so let's move on. So, okay, um, first thing. We can see in this verse that Narad Muni is talking about Kriya Yoga. So yoga is being discussed, Kriya Yoga is being discussed. Um, I think all of us have understood because for the past two years, whenever we've had chat sessions, off and on we've had discussions about yoga. What does actually yoga mean? And in the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly stated that yoga means to get in touch with the Supreme Lord or to connect with the Supreme Lord. Somehow or the other, we have to connect 
with the original, which, which the supreme, because that is our eternal nature. And then in the Bhagavad Gita, um, chapter 6, verse 47, it actually says, who is a real yogi? Yogi nam api sarvesha madgate nantaratmana shraddhavam bhajate yoma same yukta matomataha. It says that, and Krishna is saying this, these are words that Krishna is speaking to Arjuna, where he says that one who has within his heart established me and who constantly thinks of me, who is completely devoted to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga. <clears throat> and he is the highest of all. This is Krishna's words about a yogi. So now here, what Narad Muni is explaining is about Kriya Yoga. Kriya, what does Kriya mean? Kriya means it is activities, right? In the past couple of verses, you must, if you remember, the word that was twice it was used. So in verse 32 and 33, one word was used, which was chikitsitam, chikitsa. Chikitsa means, um, chikitsitam means where you're getting cured, you're getting treated. Chikitsa kind of means like a medical center, chikitsale, hospital. So then the question is, what is one getting uh, treated for? Why do we need treatment? What are we suffering from? So the condition that we all are suffering from is that we have this material disease. And the disease that we have is that we all want to enjoy our senses, right? All of us are so attracted to and attached to our senses that that is all that we are trying to enjoy. So any activity also that we are doing, any kriya, any activities that we are performing is being done just to satisfy our own senses. But Narad Muni here is saying that the cause of the disease can also become the cure for the disease. And Prabhupada very often in his classes uses the analogy of the milk how sometimes the milk can cause indigestion, but the same milk in the form of yogurt can cure the indigestion also. So here, the same thing, the kriya or the activities that you're doing, which is causing you bondage, can also cause liberation, right? Now let us understand how that is. What is important to understand is that an activity in itself is not the cause for bondage. So let's say that here I have a picture of this lady going to buy vegetables. Buying vegetables, that activity is not causing you bondage. But what actually is causing bondage is the consciousness behind it. When you're buying vegetables, just so that you can enjoy your own senses or that you can fulfill you know, the enjoyment of for your family, that is going to cause bondage. However, if you think, if you think that, you know, I'm going to change, I'm buying these vegetables so that I can make something nice and offer it to Krishna and then have that as prashad. See, there is a shift in the consciousness and then there will be no bondage. So then the next question is, why is it that work is causing us bondage? Work is causing us bondage because we, human being has been given this intelligence and we are using this intelligence in a wrong way in the sense that we think that we are the cause for all the work and we are the controller of everything that is happening. Again, let us look at this example. That suppose there is a cashier in let's say a, a bank or a big company. And every day he's dealing in millions of uh, millions of rupees or millions of dollars or pounds or whatever it is that you take it. Um, he realizes that that money that he's giving and taking is not his own money. Let's say that something goes wrong, that let's say the bank gets robbed or the company goes bankrupt. 
does he think that this was all my money and i have gone bankrupt and does he think that now i will have to sell my house to give that money back or or anything of that sort no because he knows that that money is not his his own money what he's dealing with in our case when we are given this human form of life we start to think that we are the cause of everything that is happening around us everything that is happening with me and with everybody that is attached to me and that i am the controller and that is the reason why then this this work causes bondage but interestingly here narad muni is saying that this same work if we shift our consciousness and if we connect it if we join it yoga yoga if we join it to the supreme then that will not cause us any bondage so this is a very very famous verse of the bhagavad gita 2.47 i think everybody knows it i'm just going to read the translation for it it says you have a right to perform your prescribed duty but you are not entitled to the fruits of action never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty so the whole point over here in this verse very clearly it is saying is that yes you have the right to perform your prescribed duty but you you you're meant to perform the duty but you're not meant to enjoy the fruits of whatever action that you have done this leads us on to a very interesting factor is that as human beings we have got duties to perform the shastras talk about different types of duties but i thought we'll just focus on the two types of duties one is the nitya dharma which is the eternal duty dharma sometimes is um translated as religion sometimes dharma means the nature like in in previous classes we've discussed how shrila prabhupada when he talks about dharma he talks about dharma of a salt is to be salty dharma of sugar is to be sweet so that is the nature you know like um that's the nature of somebody so nitya dharma so you've got an eternal duty and then you have naimitik dharma naimitik dharma is the temporary duty we have come in this human form so we have duty this temporary duty what we realize is that this temporary duty is constantly changing not only will it change once we change the body but even currently it is changing constantly when we are a child we have a duty towards our parents we have a duty to study you know when you grow up you get employed so you have a duty towards your employer to perform whatever you know activities in the office or wherever else you're employed you probably become parents so you have duty towards your children you have duty towards the society but these are all temporary duties and these will constantly cause us bondage then of course we have the nitya dharma which is the eternal duty the eternal duty of a human being actually the eternal duty of a soul is to connect to the super soul but unfortunately in other forms of body that we get the physical body we get we don't have the intelligence to do that but in the human form we've got the intelligence to understand that i am this eternal soul and i need to connect to the eternal super soul that is my nitya dharma so what we are talking about here is that we have to perform our temporary duties we cannot run away from it they have to be done in order to survive in this material world however if we are able to perform these duties keeping krishna in the center offering the results of these duties to krishna then the same duties which otherwise may have caused us bondage will lead to liberation and an example can be seen from our scriptures um when arjuna was on the battlefield of kurukshetra one of the reasons he was giving for not fighting the war was because he was worried that he will get entangled in the karma in of killing so many people however when one understands when one gets the realization that whatever you're doing if you're doing it for krishna in his service then there is no bondage same way hanuman when he burnt lanka he killed so many innocent people as well 
of course you know there were the perpetrators of the of crime oh. but there were innocent people there were children there were women there were brahmanas who were killed but because hanuman was doing it as a service to krishna to ram so he was he he did not get entangled so again the analogy here where the same thing which can cause a disease can also be used in order to cure yourself so the activities which is causing us bondage right now narad muni is trying to explain that those same activities can actually cause you liberation if if i am able to offer the fruits of my activity to the supreme personality of godhead otherwise i will be entangled in this constant cycle of birth and death and there will be no way of coming out of this um in the in the verse the example of the banyan tree is given and when we were studying the bhagavad gita we had read and understood this inherently all of us have got lust we have desires to enjoy and that actually is the root which is causing our bondage to this material world and this root is very very deep like the roots of the banyan tree our attachment our attraction to our families is like the branches of this banyan tree which is spread all over we are attached to our family then we are attached to our society then the country then you know it just continues to spread and unless we realize and understand till we stay on the platform of this material body thinking of myself as a man a woman a an engineer or doctor or father or mother or whatever else we will continue to be entangled but the moment we realize that actually i am the spirit soul i am not just this body i am the spirit soul and everything that i am doing i have to offer to the lord um in this chapter verse 12 actually has a very nice sanskrit word which it says akutya bhava varjitam it means that whatever is taking you away from krishna you need to get rid of such activities varjitam means that what is not what is not taking you closer to krishna those activities or what is devoid of of krishna you need to get rid of those activities for a soul to be able to again connect to the super soul to again start to identify with his true self the most important thing is to stop identifying with the false self which all of us are doing currently at least i am it's very difficult we read we learn but to apply it and to be able to actually disassociate myself from this physical body i struggle with it every time and so in summary in the in the purport propa is saying that the most important thing that we have to do is oh, sorry before i go to that um bhagavad gita verse 9.27 very beautiful verse yat karosi yad asnasi yad juhosi dadasi yat 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 tapasya sikonte yat tat kurusva mad arpanam whatever you do whatever you eat whatever you offer or give away and whatever austerities you perform do that o son of kunti as an offering to me so the whole point that narad muni is trying to say here is <clears throat> yes you are entitled to perform kriya you have to perform activities you have to cook you have to work you have to study you have to bring up your children but all of these activities if you dovetail that around krishna offer it to krishna then in that case those same activities will become the cause of liberation for you and then in summary in the in the purport rupa this talking about how it is so important to seek the association of pure devotees and in the shrimad bhagavatam fourth canto 30 chapter 34th verse the translation says even a moment's association with a pure devotee cannot be compared to being transferred to heavenly planets or even merging into the brahman effulgence in complete liberation for living entities who are destined to give up the body and die 
Association with pure devotees is the highest benediction. In the purport of the same verse, Prabhupada says, the topmost benediction for those who are living in this material world and are subjected to the repetition of birth and death, transmigration, is association with pure devotees. So here again, and time and time again, in the purports and in his lectures, Prabhupada has emphasized how it is so very important to seek the association of pure devotees. So then the question is, um, how do we associate with pure devotees? I'm sorry, I can hear some sounds. I'm just going to mute. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the question then is, how do we associate with pure devotees? Uh, does anybody have any thoughts on this point? How do we associate with pure devotees? Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, to associate with pure devotees is also reading the Bhagavad Gita every day, Bhagavatam every day. Um, and obviously, the pure devotees uh, like Srila Prabhupada and his disciples. So. Uh, if we, we can't get the association uh, face to face, obviously it's difficult to get association face to. If we hear them, uh, their lectures, that's also association, in my opinion. Thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Ji. A lot of um, today's, you know, when we talk about the Bhagavad Gita to people, many times, uh, you know, we hear things like. You know, it was easy for Arjuna because he was on the battlefield standing in front of Krishna and listening to Krishna. But what they fail to understand that the same message that Krishna was giving to Arjuna is in the Bhagavad Gita as it is. So Krishna is speaking to us through the Bhagavad Gita, right? Srila Prabhupada has translated all these teachings for us so that we can associate with Srila Prabhupada no matter where we are, no matter in what condition we are. It doesn't matter. So that is, that is the whole point of trying to read these books, trying to distribute these books. That is the way we can associate. Let me just, um, let me just stop sharing. So that, that is one way of associating with the pure devotees of the Lord. And then there is, let me leave you all with one very beautiful um, short story, really short, not even a story, just some, a little two lines. One day, um, Hanuman was saying to um, Lord Ram, he said that, you know, the citizens of Ayodhya are so very fortunate because they have direct association of you, Lord Ram. And then he said, however, the entire universe, all the worlds are also as, uh, very, very fortunate wherever your name is being chanted because they are getting direct association of you through chanting your holy name. See, for all of us, we constantly talk about chanting. We cannot artificially renounce things. We cannot one fine day say that, okay, I'm renouncing the world. I'm renouncing my family, my senses and everything. That is not possible. Prabhupada has said that in many of his classes and purpose, that is not possible. Unless you develop an attraction for something else, you will not be able to leave this particular thing. And that is why it is so very important to develop attraction for chanting the holy name and for reading the books that Srila Prabhupada has left for us. Because that is direct association with the Lord himself and with the pure devotees of the Lord. So this entire verse, two main things that we should focus on. One is how we can dovetail all our activities as an offering to Krishna so that the same activities which would have caused bondage will actually give us liberation. And that is Narad Muni's instruction here. And the second part, the second part of the purport talks about associating with pure devotees, which we can do by reading Srila Prabhupada's books and by chanting, which we are doing right now. So I'll stop here. Thank you all very much. If you have any comments or questions or corrections, or you want to add something, please feel free to unmute yourself and um, speak. Thank you.
No comments, no questions. Everybody is happy. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yes. Dandavat Pranam. Please accept the consequences. Thank you, Mataji. Wonderful um, explanation of uh, how to associate with pure devotees and the whole lecture. Thank you very much. Just wanted to say thank you. Oh, thank you so awesome. much, Mataji. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Hare Krishna. Anybody else? Any questions, comments, or you're happy with this um, with this verse? Hare Krishna Mataji. As usual, yes. it was so wonderful. You know, you you sum it up so well and you explain so well and greatly you do everything, you know, the very to the point of your classes. Thank you. You all Hare are very Krishna. kind. You all are very kind, but thank you very much. I just repeat, I am very good at copy and pasting. So I repeat whatever I hear. I try to. I try to. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. If there are no more comments or questions, then we will stop here. And um, hopefully all of you are getting ready for the biggest celebration, uh, Janmashtami, and hope that all of you can come to the manor for the celebration of Krishna's birthday. We are all busy preparing. Um, so we have the festival on Friday and Sunday. So maybe we, we will see you all there. Uh, thank you very much. And um, I shall see you hopefully next Wednesday again. Thank you very much. One chakal Patri. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. 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 Thank you.